Hello everyone, welcome to the Reds Take. Um, I usually do this on Thursday, but because of Thanksgiving, I'm moving it up a day where I'm going to go over my NFL predictions for this week. Um, so let's get started with a couple of Thanksgiving games. Let's start off with the first one between the Packers and the Lions, who are sitting half point favorites. It's awesome that this is a Lions team that actually deserves to play on Thanksgiving Day, unlike, unlike previous years. And despite the Lions being better than the Packers, as evidenced the last time they played against each other back in um, late September, um, I think the Packers make this more of an interesting game than it should be. The Packers offensively has actually figured some stuff out in the past two weeks, which is perfect since the Lions' defense has regressed the past couple weeks. Now, I don't think the Packers will contain the Lions' offense now be the difference of the game. I think it will take till the fourth quarter for Detroit to finally edge out Green Bay. But nevertheless, they get a win on Thanksgiving Day, which is rare for them. Uh, so I have Detroit winning 27-20. to 20. Next, you got the Commanders versus the Cowboys, your 11-point favorites. For some reason, whether the Cowboys win or lose, they have struggled playing on Thanksgiving Day over the last five years. Now, I will definitely take the Cowboys to win this game. However, since the Commanders' offense can be explosive at times, I do think they could put some points up on the board and make things interesting or potentially cover the spread. I have them winning Dallas winning 30 to 20. Next, you got the 49ers versus the Seahawks. Uh, 49ers are six and a half point favorites. Both teams will play again at some point in the season, but if the 49ers win this game in Seattle, they basically lock up the division. The problem is on a short week, um, Seahawks star running back Kenneth Walker is questionable and might be out. Quarterback Geno Smith also has an elbow injury as well. Um, I think the Seahawks defense will keep them in the game for the first half, but in the second half, the 49ers start to pull away and get the big win. I have them winning 27 to 13. And then we got a Black Friday game. Um, we got Dolphins, 10 point favorites versus the Jets. On um, Now, here's the thing yes, Jets quarterback Zach Wilson could have played better. No questions about that. However, the Jets have more problems than quarterback. The offensive line, as I mentioned before, is horrendous. They have no weapons besides Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. Even then, sometimes they play questionably. And then the play calling is horrendous. And the list goes on and on. Starting Tim Boyle, who has more interceptions than touchdowns, not only in his NFL career, but also his college career, is not the answer. Boyle won't, while he knows the system better, Boyle won't make them better. Neither will Trevor Simeon if he ends up starting at some point. With the Jets' defense starting to wear down, I think the D Dolphins in this game will pounce on the Jets and make this another ugly game for them. I have Miami winning 30-7. to seven. Okay, and I got the Sunday games. Let's start off with the Steelers, who are one-point favorites versus the Bengals. The fact that the Steelers are barely a favorite over the Bengals, who have quarterback Jake Browning making his first career start, Says a lot. While firing off its quarterback Canada was a good move and the right move for them, quarterback Kenny Pickett still has to make plays. I don't think he could do that as of the way he's playing right now. Now, I do think they will do what they should do, which is rely heavily on the run game and squeeze out a win to get themselves in still in a good position to get the playoffs. I have Pittsburgh winning barely 14 to 13. Next, you get the Jaguars, two point favorites versus the Texans. One of the biggest games of the weekend, actually, with Houston destroying Jacksonville the last time they played. If Houston wins again and sweeps them, they have the inside track to win a division. I think it'll be a close and fun game. It'll come down to the wire. I think um, Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence will make some clutch plays like he did last year when the division was on the line and hanging in the balance, and Jacksonville survives at the money 24-23. Next, you got the Buccaneers versus the Colts, or two and a half point favorites. Tampa Bay has not had the easiest of schedules over the last month, so while the losses are understandable, it also just shows that despite still being a mix to win their division, because it's a bad division, they have multiple things they need um, to be improved. Now, while the Colts aren't perfect and quarterback Gardner Mitchell is not perfect by any means, Colts coach Shane Stythen continues to figure out ways to put his team in position to win, despite not having a great quarterback. And I think that remains the case once again this week. I have Colts winning 22-20. to 20. Next, you got the Saints versus the Falcons, your one-point favorites. Big game for both teams. The winner gets a gets um, in position to win a division. Now, both teams will play against each other at some point before the season's over, so it's not the end-all, be-all, but it definitely does help. Um, the Falcons are going to start Desmond Ritter at quarterback. They claim he has fixed his issues and is good to go now. 
I severely doubt that. Um, now, Saints quarterback Derek Carr is in concussion protocol. I expect for him to be cleared by the end of the week. If for some reason he's not, then James Winston with his stop play can keep the Falcons in the game, if not cost them the game. Um, now, also having a good receiver like Michael Thomas going on for the Saints doesn't help. But I think the Saints will just rely heavily on Alvin Kamara and Taysom Hill. Just rely on that heavy dose of the run game to get the win. Um, and I have the winning 17 to 16. Next, you get the Patriots versus the Giants. Patriots two-point favorites. Um, despite the Patriots not being good, one thing that usually happens is Belichick beats up on rookie quarter, um, very bad quarterbacks or rookie quarterbacks. So I feel like Giants quarterback Tommy DeVito will come back down to earth after his good game against Washington last week. And I think, therefore, the Patriots could score even just seven points in this game and still get the win, whether that's Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi starting, who Belichick's not naming yet who's starting. Now, the dilemma here for the Patriots is that do they secretly want to lose so they can have a top-two pick and get their quarterback in the draft, especially if Belichick's not back with this team next season and they want to rebuild and move on? I think that's a likely scenario, so I do think the Giants at home squeak out an ugly win here. I have them winning 10-7. to Next, you get the Patriots. You get the Panthers versus the Titans, their three and a half point favorites. I know the Titans have lost three straight games since Will Levis has been the starting quarterback instead of Tannehill. However, it's not his fault for these losses. The Titans are frankly a rebuilding team, and Levis doesn't have a lot of help around him. Now, this is a now, this is a game to judge him on, in my opinion. If he struggles against one of the worst teams in the league, then you may have to say, okay, maybe he's not the guy uh, for next season. I do think this would be a close game, but Levis will make clutch plays in this game to get his team a win. I have them winning 17 and 16. Next, you get the Rams, uh, barely favorites, versus the Cardinals. Um, the Rams upsetting the Seahawks last week was predictable. However, I'm not going to get fooled into thinking the Rams are back in the playoff mix. Star receiver Cooper Cup re-injured himself, and so did other star receiver Puka Nakua, and they're both questionable. Um, they are struggling to run a ball, and quarterback Matthew Stafford looked very rusty coming off his injury last week. I think Arizona quarterback Kyler Murray leads his team to go 2-1 and one since he's been back in the lineup. I have Arizona winning by a field goal, 20-17. to 17. Next, you get the Browns, 2.5 point favorites versus the Broncos. Well, the Broncos win five in a row now. Um, this will be a tough test since the Browns are a top five defense. The Broncos will have to continue with their winning formula, which means Russell Wilson not turning the ball over, being patient, taking the plays that are given to him, however small they may be, and then the defense needs to force multiple turnovers. I think both things can actually happen in this game, and the Broncos continue their hot streak. I have the money 13-9. Next, you got the Chiefs, versus uh, nine-point favorites versus the Raiders. Um, since the Chiefs blew that game to the Eagles last week, I expect them to come out better and play better this week and bounce back. Now, I'm not sure if they will cover the spread or not this game. They usually don't cover the spread, and Vegas has been playing way better since Coach Josh McDaniels has gotten fired, and it's a divisional rivalry game for that matter. So I would take the Chiefs to win, but not cover. I have them winning 20 to 13. Next, you got the Bills versus the Eagles, who are three and a half point favorites. I like the Eagles to win this game. The question is, will it be close or not? It honestly shouldn't be close. The Bills are too up and down, and the, but the problem is the Eagles allow teams to remain in games. So I think at home off a bad offensive game from this past week, the Eagles will look to steal the spotlight and further cement their quest to have the number one seed in the NFC. I have the winning 21-13. For Sunday football, you get the Ravens, three and a half point favorites versus the Chargers. This is not a good bounce back game for the Chargers, who desperately need to win. I feel despite not having star tight end Mark Andrews, quarterback Lamar Jackson, and his weapons will have a field day against this bad Chargers defense, especially with star pass rusher Joey Bosa out on IR. Then the Chargers offense is struggling, whether it's the offensive line not holding up or the receivers, other than Keelan Allen, um, dropping balls. Um, I think this could I think this could potentially be the final straw to get Chargers coach Brand Staley fired. I have Baltimore winning 38 to 17. And then for Monday Night Football, you got the Bears versus the Vikings, or three and a half point favorites. Bears quarterback Justin Fields looked like he didn't miss a beat when he returned from his finger injury. Fields' last three starts were against here's the thing, here's the thing to keep in mind though. Fields' last three starts were against the Broncos back when they had a bad defense, the Commanders' awful defense, and the Lions' defense, which has some injuries and is not as good as they were um, when the season started. With Vikings defense corner Brian Flores loving the blitz, I think Fields doesn't look as good this week. This game comes down to the Vikings' offense. Credit to the Broncos for last week, but the Vikings' penalties and turnovers over cost that game, and the game they should have won. If the Vikings take care of the ball and don't have self-inflicted wounds, then they will win this game and keep themselves afloat for a wild card spot. I'm the winning 24 
the 16th. So thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel and tell me about me. Thank you very much, and you all have a wonderful day.